talk turned deadly. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. Scott. Now, Donna has been helping Scott pursue his secret crush on John. John. Jenny Jones was one of many daytime talk show hosts in the 90s that had viewers tuning in to watch ordinary people reveal their deepest, darkest secrets. But one of those revelations would turn deadly. On the March 6th, 1995 taping of The Jenny Jones Show, titled Same Sex Secret Crushes, Scott Emmerdur 32, admitted to being a secret admirer of acquaintance Jonathan Schmitz, 24. I think I have heard of this. It's a pretty, pretty well-known part of talk show history, reality history, and of course, uh, for the Jenny Jones show. Yeah. Wow. Um, When things spiral out of control, when things are on a show, on TV, for a show, produced for television, and it gets to... Something as extreme as, like, stalking, taking a life, crime. It is absolutely fascinating and horrifying. Let me ask you a question. You you worked you know, as a producer on a show. And I you did. worked with uh, talent, celebrities. Did you ever feel like you had to... Not man- the word is manipulate is not the right word. Mm-hmm. But in a way, you have to do your best to make sure everyone does everything in a way so when you present it it's it's like the best way possible yeah is there gonna be bananas on set and there's you know there's no bananas like well i guess we'll get bananas yes of course there'll be bananas on set oh my god Uh, worse than that and i i don't work on shows like real housewives or anything right people i know i know a lot of people who do work on the bachelor real housewives like shows like that and when you work with them they go into a mode sometimes where you're like oh yeah they know how to do this. They know how to get a story out of this. And you have to, mm-hmm. you know, do things and say things to make that happen. You're probably doing it day yeah. after day, week after week, dealing with different personalities. Absolutely. And, you know, and they're just trying to do their job. I understand. And no, no one's out there intentionally trying to harm. But they want to get a show and, and make sure the sponsors are happy and the viewers yeah. are happy and the ratings are up. And, you know, that's that's nothing new. But – this episode of Jenny Jones, uh, this is it went very, very poorly. And there is one innocent person, mm-hmm. one victim, but the guilt, I guess, is really up to you where that lies. Yeah. Both Scott Amador and Jonathan Schmitz, they live near each other in, wait for it, Lake Orion, Michigan. Okay. Michigan is adjacent because I. From the Midwest. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Just want to get. Uh-huh. Let, I know Good. you need that okay. little bit. Just need to scratch that itch. We can continue. You know, they contact Jonathan Schmitz, who's like, "Hey, listen, you have a secret admirer." Yeah. And he's. Do you want to come on the show? And he probably. I've seen your show. I like. I you know. I, I can't speak to what is going on in his mind, but he probably sounds kind of appealing, curious. Number one, and maybe yeah. I'm looking for a connection. Yeah. All those things that that we want and. The issue really begins the ownership of the show, whether. They told him it was a man or a woman, mm-hmm. and the fact that he inquired because really a big thing about this case is is they say they were they didn't say if it was a man or a woman, and their mm-hmm. bases are covered. Yeah, his the you know his side is like no, I asked a bunch of times like listen if it's a guy I'm not interested. Yeah, and I think that's a fair thing to ask. It's absolutely, not- and I can totally, totally, totally see producers avoiding that question and even lying. I watched. The trial, or mm-hmm. as much as I could see of it, and interviews with people involved and you know, the people on the stand. And then you see notes saying that, essentially, I'm paraphrasing, apprehensive about if it's a man that he doesn't want to. And yeah. Yeah, you really, that's his, it's, it's 1995. It, it, to speak on, like, you know, the how people view same sex relationships yes. or sexuality in general, yes. not very easy now. 1995 wasn't any easier. No. Very bad. I mean, Rent was barely, it just came out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, the, exactly. The play Rent like, just came out. You know, AIDS, it, I think, was was still so much on the forefront yes. of people's minds. Yes. And, the you know, the 
government wasn't doing anything to make that easier, you mm-hmm. know. He has the right to know the information before he goes on there. They eventually went on to say that, quote, we've talked to her. Everything is going to be fine. Oh, can't use that pronoun. That's misleading. So if you, you know, you can go and find, watch the, the court case, you see people saying, oh, no, we we said it could be a man or a woman. But yeah. then you see... Uh, Proof to the contrary. Yeah. The problem is like, it's like you, it doesn't seem that egregious to be misconstruing a gender when you're trying to get someone on a show, but it's the cumulative social context and the way this man was raised and all the stuff that made this one not seemingly, you know, like a little lie. Well, not even a white lie. It's not good, but. And and I'm sure the show wasn't being like, listen, we don't care who has to die for this. Yeah, no, no, no. No one expects that. But they didn't know what they were working with, like they do. Well, they really didn't know because they did not really have a proper background check on it because he had a history of mental illness Mm -hmm. and substance abuse. And he had just been in a uh, relationship with a woman. I think he was engaged for a while and he had just broken up a couple of months ago. So, you know, his state wasn't added to the fact that he was deceived, however you want to interpret it. Uh, was just a recipe for disaster. Yeah. And, you know, the show really didn't do its really due diligence on his background. And I don't know at the time if that was something that was like, oh, that's something we normally do or that's something, mm-hmm. you know, I'm now I think for the Jenny Jones so- show that they would do something like that. But I I can see them also, again, kind of fast tracking. Fa- yeah, because they need the, they need to cast the show. The shows they're taping it this day and it's just like full speed ahead, people. They tape the show. You can watch it. It has never been aired, but you can – they use it for the trial and you can watch it. It's tough to watch because you know what's – You yeah. know what's happening. It's not like it aired and then a lot of time passed where something bad happened because it was only three days later. Yeah. He was embarrassed. in front. It's a live studio audience. Oh it doesn't matter if it aired yet. He, 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 You know, he was embarrassed and – you know, it's I, I can't put myself. I, I probably would be too. And I know that you know. Oh, I, everyone's you know has the the you know the benefit of hindsight. Being no, I would sure. just be yeah. very fluid about it. And maybe you would no, be talking about someone who's been through a lot, who yeah. has a bunch of different issues that could be triggered at any given moment. Yeah. Having a bunch of cameras, a bunch of lights on him, Jenny Jones looking at him, and being ambushed. Yeah, and revealed that uh, what he did expressly did not want to happen. I don't know if he had a sense of like he probably was thinking he's like oh. Well, I mean, it's not, uh, you know, Sharon Stone, you know, mm-hmm. it's yeah. like, it, there's got to be something about it to make it entertaining. So I'm sure mm-hmm. he had an idea. And then when they were like, oh, no, it's, it's like, well, they told me it was. So I, at least, you know, they kind of let me in on it, but mm-hmm. not true. So he was it was ambushed and it's, you know, you watch it and, it, you know, everything seems fine. They, you know, taped it. it probably seems a little bit embarrassed. And, mm-hmm. the, you know, the, the guy who brought him on was uh, Scott Amador, who was older. He's mm-hmm. 34 and he's uh, 32 and he's um, – Jonathan was 24. It's definitely like uh, it's sensational and a little bit sleazy of the show to do with this Yeah, movie. Especially yeah. then. Yeah. I remember I went to a Jerry Springer taping uh, in – I mean this is 10 years after this. But even – it's just like I think it's like part and parcel to be sleazy. But again, not even understanding what that might mean. Yeah. And unfair to, to Scott because, you know, yeah. he was like, I-, I want to do this. The show wants to do this. They're doing their work. So he's yeah. like, I'm, you know, I- I'm not lying. Yeah. I'm not deceiving. And then what happened is three days later, Scott left a note that was, quote, suggestive. Mm-hmm. What was on the note? I don't know. At Jonathan Schmidt's house. So Oof. Jonathan Schmidt read the note, withdrew money from the bank, bought a shotgun. Oh, my God. Went to Scott Amador's mobile home, mm-hmm. approached about the note. Hey, what's the deal with this note? I'm paraphrasing. I don't yeah. know what the conversation was. I wasn't there. And then went back to his car, got the shotgun, and then shot Scott Amador twice in the chest. And he immediately called 911. And conf- I mean, I'm sure when he did it, it was... I, I can't speak to what was going on in his mind, and yeah. you know, I don't know who but really But he can. called 911, too. To he didn't afterwards. just leave. So he didn't just leave. So it was – and I, uh, I I can't say if Scott didn't leave that note, if he left well enough alone, because mm-hmm. the, the episode never aired. Then there was a trial, and according to Jonathan Schmidt's defense lawyer, Jenny Jones wanted Scott Amador to give Schmidt's flowers and kiss him on camera. 
So oh, it was like, and again, I don't know if that's Jenny Jones going, here's my idea or it's producers. And then Jenny's like, yeah, I think that would be good. I, I, yeah. uh, uh, you know, I think Jenny Jones is a fine person. I like her. She seems super cool. Well, you she know, also, I, I assume that she shoots these like, so three big. in a day, you and, know, just you know, onto the next one. You, know, you uh, we have my baby. Yeah, I, exactly. you left me at the altar, whatever. Yeah. He also said that Jones, quote, kept twisting the knife. Oof. Which is so a bit chilling. Incredibly tone deaf to be the nicest about it that I can be. So Jonathan Schmitz was convicted of second degree murder because there was, it was premeditated. Mm -hmm. There was things behind what happened. There was catalyst mm -hmm. happening behind it. It wasn't just like, I don't like this dude, you know, yeah. I'm gonna plan on, on, on killing him. So he was sentenced to 25 to 50 years. Jenny Jones, along with the producers, were sued by Scott Amador's family Great. for not doing a background check. Jenny Jones testified under oath that the producers told Schmidt that Zemeyer could be a man, but Schmidt's thought that the admirer was a woman. So they said, hey, listen, we said it could be either. He just mm -hmm. assumed it was a woman. But that's not what the other side says. Yes. He found Scott Amador's family to be in, in their favor. And they were ordered to pay $25 million. And the decision was later overturned. <laughs> because Jeez. of the fact that the show producers and Jenny Jones are not responsible. Because what happens after they yeah. leave the show, we can't be responsible. I'm sure there's tons of papers that you sign. Oh, yeah. Can't be responsible, you know, in 30 years. If you're like, I watched Jenny Jones that episode 30 years later, I want a killing spree. They can't just automatically. And I do understand that mm. if it wasn't so deceptive to get to that point. You know, it's like maybe yeah. scrap that or maybe yeah. have backups where you have people that are like, I, listen, I, I just want to be on TV. I don't care if it's my yeah. you know, my exactly. friend, my brother. Exactly. My, my I'll sister. act like I, you know, I'll act like this person. We can do a reenactment or something. It again, matter, it's, yeah. yeah, but that, that, you know, I think he went along with it because he's probably very embarrassed. Mm -hmm. And again, you can watch it. You can, it's, it's, it's there God. to watch and it's in, you can watch the trial and see Jen Jones, which is obviously very upset. And Jonathan Schultz was released from prison on parole for good behavior in August, 2017 at age 47. Honestly, like, pr prison looks like it, it is done well for him. He looks pretty good. I mean, he looks yeah. like he's aged really well. All right. Well. Uh, I, I, I always looked. I was like, oh, wow. It's like this is, has not been bad for you. I don't know if it helped with his, you know, problems with, with substance yeah, abuse and mental health, health and, yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, I'm, sh you know, he seems like he was sorry for doing it. That doesn't make it right. That doesn't make it good. And it's not going to bring Scott Amador back. No. It's also the producers that facilitated this i hope that they left the business and think about it every day well jenny jones then went off the air in 2003 okay. <laughs> so okay. it did not go anywhere it lasted yeah. another eight years it got pulled from certain you know certain networks were pulling it they're claiming oh there's other things that have been on your show you've you know had trans uh, trans gender on there mm -hmm. and, and they claim there's like a bunch of different reasons but you know it's probably that somewhat understandable but i would like to thank Sources, NBCnews.com, and their article, The Man Who Killed a Gay Admirer, Jenny Jones Show, is Out of Prison. And from the New York Daily News, article, Jenny Jones Killer Who Murdered, Best Friend Over Gay Crush to Be Released from Prison, Inside Edition, and Ranker.com, The Bizarre Case of the Jenny Jones wow. Murder. And my episode of Jerry Springer, which me and my roommate from college, Lacey Summer, were in the front row with Jerry Springer sh shirts can be seen still. What's There's, the name of that episode? Uh, threesomes, foursomes, and moresomes. <laughs> okay. Okay.